Moses is out doing his shepherd thing, and God speaks to him through the burning bush. Moses, I have heard the cry of your people. They are enslaved. They are suffering. I need you to go free them. They go to Egypt, and Moses is like, I'm gonna need you to free all the slaves. Pharaoh's like, <laughs> excuse me? Says who? I'm Pharaoh. I was like, yeah, God told me, um, my, like my, my God, I know you guys, we worship, you guys worship different gods. I have a different God now. Um, and he says, you gotta free the Israelites. They are like God's chosen people. You gotta let them go. And Pharaoh's like, <laughs> absolutely not. Leave. And Moses is like, no, dude, I really need you to do this. I really need you to free the Israelites. God says you have to do this or there's going to be trouble. And Pharaoh's like, okay, your God's going to threaten me. Bring it on. Moses goes to God and he's like, hey, he said no. He said no. So what do we do about this? And God is like, I got you. I need you to go back and ask him again. And Moses is like, I, I just asked him. He said no. And God says, ask him again. And if he says no, I'm going to punish him. And Moses is like, all right. He goes back to Pharaoh. He's like, hey. You gotta free the Israelites! Any more thoughts on that? And Pharaoh's like, get out! And Moses is like, you brought this on yourself. And then we get the plagues, which is like the coolest choral song ever, but it really sucks for the Egyptians. God sends a bunch of plagues to Egypt to punish Pharaoh, because Pharaoh is like, absolutely not. I am not freeing my slaves. We do slavery here, and that's gonna wreck the economy. He does not free the Israelites. That's where like the, the plagues bit starts. It's like, thus say the Lord, thus say the Lord, I send a pestilence and play. It's like a whole montage. It's one of the best parts of the movie. They turn the Nile River into blood and all the fish die because they turn the river into, it's blood. Fish can't breathe in that stuff. So all the fish die and it's just really, really gross in Egypt for a while. God is like, you gonna free the slaves? Pharaoh still doesn't. So God sends frogs. Frogs are cool. We should love frogs. They are an important part of the ecosystem, but they start causing problems in Egypt because there's a lot of them. They're in people's beds. They're in everybody's houses. They're in the ovens so that the, the bread, if you try to bake bread in them, it comes out with a bunch of baked frogs in it. It's a big problem for Egypt. And the Egyptian magicians, like kind of their holy men, the magicians couldn't do anything about the frogs. They tried, they asked their gods, their gods were not helping apparently. Pharaoh is like, hey, okay, okay, make the frogs go away and I will free the slaves. And Moses is like, yeah, we did it. Hey God, he said he'd free the slaves, make the frogs go away. And God's like, all right, sounds fake, but okay. And he makes the frogs go away. And then Pharaoh's like, <laughs> psych, I'm not freeing the slaves. And now the frogs are gone, got you. And Moses is like, should have gotten that in writing. God's like, all right, ask him again. Just, just make sure that he said no to freeing the slaves. Let's make sure there's no misunderstanding. I'm gonna give him another chance. So Moses is like, hey, Pharaoh, you said you were gonna free the slaves. <laughs> They're still out there being enslaved. Pharaoh's like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not actually gonna do it. I'm, I'm not actually gonna free the slaves. That was just get rid of the frogs. And Moses was like, there's gonna be more punishment as if you don't do it. Like, do you want another frogs thing? So Pharaoh's like, will it be frogs this time? And Moses is like, I don't know. It's, it's up to God, but it's gonna be another punishment. And Pharaoh's like, <laughs> I'll take my chances. It can't happen twice. It does happen twice. Now there's flies everywhere. Swarms and swarms of them. In Pharaoh's house, in the servants' houses, everybody has a fly problem. And there are no exterminators. And they're spreading disease and getting in people's houses and in their food, just like the frogs. It's super gross. And same thing happens again. Pharaoh's like, make the flies go away. And Moses is like, will you free the slaves? He's like, yeah, just make the flies go away. And Moses is like, God, he said he'd let them go. And God's like, dope. And the flies go away. And then Pharaoh's like, psych, I wasn't gonna free the slaves. This keeps happening. We have many plagues. Next, God starts killing off livestock. He gets the livestock sick. All of their cattle start dying. And you need cattle for like milk and meat and such. They're very important and very useful livestock. They're extremely valuable. But all the cattle keep dying. Pharaoh is... He is not being cooperative, and he is not helping, and he is not being very nice either. The next plague, there's like an epidemic of boils. So if you don't know what a boil is,
So everybody's just in pain all the time and they got boils all over their bodies. It sucks. The livestock is sick. The people are sick. And Pharaoh is still not budging. He's like, surely this is a coincidence and at some point it'll stop. I want to keep my slaves. It does not stop. And then there's another great song in the movie where they have like this duet in plagues. He's where Moses is like, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, I will not let your people go. It's so good, you guys. Next, there's locusts. Locusts are gross little insects that will eat all your crops and just be nasty all the time. Pharaoh still doesn't let them go. And then they have a plague of darkness. No one can see. Just this thick mist of darkness that even if they have fire, like candles, they can't see in this darkness. And finally, Pharaoh's like, Moses, stop messing up my kingdom, and throws him out. He's like, don't come back. So Moses is like, All right, okay, I'm not looking to get executed. We're already having enough problems. So eventually, many plagues, a lot of problems happen in Egypt. And finally, God pulls out the big guns. It gets worse. And he says, okay, Moses, I'm about to do something really big. I really don't want my chosen people to be affected by this. So I am gonna give you some instructions, all of you guys, and I need you to pass this on to the Israelites. The firstborn child of every family in Egypt is going to die because Pharaoh's not listening. I don't wanna do this to the Israelites because this is not their fault wasn't any of the other Egyptians' fault, I guess, but um, I guess they were keeping the slaves. Anyway, God's like, I need everybody, every family, to sacrifice a lamb and take its blood and paint it over your door. Paint all of the posts of your door, all three of them, and that will be a sign that this household is full of good, obedient people that are not to be punished and the destroying angel will pass over them. Passover, this is what would become Passover, which is still a very important holiday in Jewish culture. So the Israelites do this, they do what Moses tells them, and the destroying angel comes, and in the morning, every family without lamb's blood on their door finds their firstborn dead, including Pharaoh. And finally, finally, Pharaoh relents. Go. No more. Just take your people and go. But they finally did it. Pharaoh has finally said, go. And so, with quiet celebration and heavy hearts for all the lives that paid the price, the Israelites pack up their stuff and they go to leave Egypt. And then Pharaoh hits the anger stage of grief, and he's like, This is stupid! Why would I ever let them go? It's their fault that this happened! So he chases them! And the Israelites are like, Oh, that's not good. And that's when Moses parts the Red Sea. They get up to the Red Sea, and they're like, Uh, this is water. This is pretty deep. I don't think we can walk across this, because Jesus hadn't walked on water yet anyway. And Moses is like, Hey, God, what do we do here? And God's like, I got you and gives Moses the power to part the Red Sea, this massive body of water. He basically water bends the Red Sea and puts the water on either side so that the Israelites can cross through on dry ground. And they book it across because Pharaoh's armies are still after them. They just barely make it. Moses drops the water back in and drowns Pharaoh's men. And at last, the Israelites are free. They're no longer enslaved. Just as they prayed for, God has delivered them out of the hands of their enslavers and they are free to practice their religion and to not have their children arbitrarily murdered, to do their own thing, finally. I think that's a good stopping point. Watch Prince of Egypt if you haven't. <laughs> so there we go, from Abraham to Moses. 